All right, everyone, I hope you're having a great time up here. I've talked to a few of you. Um, please scoot around, except for you're going to want to be up on stage for this next person who is near and dear to my heart. Um, I met her a year ago and have been become very close friends with her, and I'm just so lucky to have her in my life. Caroline Lind was born and raised in North Carolina. For high school, she attended Phillips Andover Academy, and that is where she learned how to row. She continued her education and rowing career at Princeton University and was a member of the 2006 undefeated National Championship Rowing Team. She was a member of the U.S. Women's National Rowing Team from 2005 to 2014, sitting seven seat of the Women's Eight Boat. During her time on the national team, she won 21 international medals, including two Olympic gold medals and six world championship gold medals. In 2014, she was ranked number one female rower in the world. She currently works at Fremont Group and is married to Brandon. They have a two-year-old adorable son named John Henry. Please welcome to the stage, Caroline Lind. Thank you so much, Natasha. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here with you guys. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about my relentless pursuit of Olympic gold medals <laughs> and a few of the steps that I took to get there. The first thing that I did was define my goal because without a clear goal, you can't plan or navigate the steps to achieving that goal. Now, this doesn't mean that the goal can't change or evolve along the way, but you have to have that goal set as a place to start. And for me, my goal was winning two Olympic gold medals. My initial goal was to win both of those medals in one Olympics by racing both the pair and the eight boat. And if you don't know anything about rowing, those are just the different boat classes. And the eight boat has eight people in a coxswain and the pair has two people. Um, and throughout my journey, this goal shifted. And I ended up winning those two Olympic gold medals in two different Olympics. But the important thing is that in the end, I was able to achieve my goal and I kept myself open to redefining that goal along the way. So I started my rowing journey in high school and some early success of being named to the junior national rowing team gave me that glimmer of hope that an Olympic medal was maybe possible. And it really helped me solidify my goal early on, which is extremely important. So I believe that the road to success is paved with small daily goals. While I always had my long-term goal of an Olympic gold medal in the back of my mind, it was the pursuit of those smaller goals each year, month, week, and day that allowed me to actually create the path to my own success. It started the momentum that eventually led to me achieving my final goal. And I don't believe there's any secret to success. I don't believe it just happens. I believe that it is completely the product of your own doing. It requires hard work, dedication, and focus on a daily basis. There are no shortcuts. <laughs> Truly being relentless in pursuit of your goal. So I can tell you what relentless looked like for me. It really was about these daily goals and understand what I was trying to achieve day to day. So for me, it wasn't all about coming to practice and just hammering as hard as, I, as possible every day. And I think some people fall into that trap where they feel like I just need to work. And of course, it's about working hard, but I just need to work hard and hammer, hammer, hammer. It's really about understanding the nuances of the daily goal, right? Is it a technique day? Do I need some recovery? Is, this, is today just about getting through practice injury-free with as little effort as possible so that my body can recover and be there for me tomorrow? Do I need to build my connections with my teammates today? Like all of those things are helpful in that long-term goal. And so you have to really pinpoint what it is in each practice or piece or meeting or anything that you're doing that you need it's like all about getting better and what you can do in that moment, in that stroke, in that piece to be your very best. And so it is through that process that you are literally, literally creating the building blocks to keep you moving forward. So I like to talk about an ERG test and understanding the concept of an ERG test because it's a great representation of this that idea of forward momentum and the idea that little steps can create larger movement. So the ERG machine, as some of you may or may not know, 
is a rowing machine and it mimics rowing on the water and it's something you can do indoors. So you may have seen the rowing, these rowing machines um, in the gym. They're called erg, ergometers. We call them for short erg machines. And these are really torture devices for rowers because this machine has a screen on it where you can literally see your 500 meter split each stroke. So each time you pull the chain back, you'll see your output. And so this tells you if you're going faster, of course, but it also tells you if you're going slower. And the thing about the ERG is that it's one of the only ways for a coach to measure an output from an individual rower, because often we're on the water in a boat filled with other people. So it's hard to determine who's making who's making that momentum in the boat, who's making that boat go faster. And so the coaches rely heavily on ERGs and ERG tests which is when you do the length of a race, which is 2000 meters on the ERG machine. So literally for about 200 strokes, while you're doing an ERG test, you can see your score on the screen telling you, are you going faster? Are you going slower? So it is stressful, it is important, and it's sort of like your big evaluation throughout the year. And during these ERG tests, I always had sort of a strategy of approaching them. And it's all about holding and pushing. So you kind of are focusing on each stroke, every single like 230 strokes of that ERG test, one stroke at a time. And eventually you get to a point during the ERG test, often in the third 500, when your legs start to go numb or you feel like you literally cannot push one more stroke your body starts to give out. And that's sort of when you have to kick your mind into gear. And that's when I think about holding and pushing. You tell yourself that you can do one more stroke, 10 more strokes, you count that out in your head. And it's all about seeing that score on the screen. And that, that score can be representative of life, right? Of when we're having a downtime or when something's going poorly. It's all about holding what you have and what you've created in that moment, holding that split, and then taking a deep breath, sitting up, counting, and saying to yourself, in two, I am going to change the momentum of my life. I am going to go faster. And despite what you're feeling, you have to, in that moment, really breathe and give everything you have to push. And I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you want to hold and then get to a point where you can push forward and be faster and move on to the next step, right? And so I think that's just a really great representation of those small goals, like that individual stroke leading you to the final goal of maybe getting your PR on an ERG test um, and getting the opportunity to race in an Olympic boat because of that ERG. So people often say to me, oh, you've always you know, been successful. You've always been in these great boats. You've won so many medals. And yes, that's true. And I have some natural talent, but I've been given opportunities along the way, right? And I've made the most of those opportunities, even when it wasn't easy. You know, I've faced challenges head on and I've conquered them, really earning each victory that I, that I achieved. And I like to remind people that I tried out for the national team for four years before I actually made it, right? So for four years, I was rowing, taking ERG tests, going on the water, competing against my teammates, trying to win that spot in a boat. And for four years, it didn't happen. But throughout those four years, I kept my goal in mind. I persisted. I was relentless. And of course, there were days along the journey where I wanted to cry, where I wanted to quit, where I literally felt like my body couldn't take one more stroke. But I didn't quit. I held and then I pushed. And I chose to see every day as a new opportunity, you know, something about just showing up and physically being there and saying, what can I do today? How can I be better? How can I change the momentum that I've been maybe having if I'm having a rough time? How can I support my teammates? What can I do to draw inspiration from them and be inspired to continue to attack to get my goal, right? But sometimes it's just about showing up, being there for your teammates, and continuing to take that next stroke, that next step towards your, towards your goal. And it was truly about being relentless. And that allowed me to ultimately achieve the goal that I set out for myself. So thank you, guys.
Wow. Caroline, thank you so much. I actually learned more about you and a lot more about rowing. Um, you've been so great in helping me through these days that I've been pushing and pushing and pushing. And really, when I go outside uh, and see you and Brandon and John Henry, it really just <sighs> helps me come back to earth and reminds me that there's this beautiful neighborhood we live in and there are things that are outside of all the pushing. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.